Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome back to my consistently half-dead channel. I know I said in a previous video that I'm in the middle of filming a longer sample testing video. That is still true. Honestly, I just can't bring myself to edit it right now because the raw footage is two hours long, and I don't even really like the video to begin with, so I might end up scrapping it. We'll see what happens, but today we're gonna do an October favorite. Um, it's November 16th when I'm finishing editing this video, so we're gonna pretend like we're doing a November favorites. I actually filmed this like two days ago. What are you talking about? Also, I just have to point out that for the entirety of this video, my right sleeve is totally crumpled and rolled up and it was infuriating to see while editing. So I just want to share the pain with you all. You can't unsee it now. You're welcome. Anyway, let's get back to my November favorites. I'm gonna go over my current favorite fragrances, skincare, makeup, and body care. We're gonna start off with fragrance because that's what the last six videos on my channel have been about. So I assume that's what most of you want to hear. Fall fragrances are always my favorite. And honestly, I've been wearing them here and there over the summer too, but now, I can go full throttle and I'm so excited. I'm gonna start off with probably my favorite and that is Eclair by Latafa. This is delicious, decadent, creamy, super sweet and cookie-like. If you don't like really sweet gourmands, you're not gonna like this. As you probably know, it's a dupe of Bianca Latte, but I actually smelled Eclair first and when I tried Bianca Latte for the first time, I have to say I was a little bit disappointed. Don't get me wrong, Bianca Latte is really yummy, but the coumarin note comes off really musty to me and I don't get that in Eclair. Plus its performance is pretty on par with Bianca Latte's and it's like $60, so mm, let's off Eclair all the way. Next is another pretty viral scent and that is Lush Sticky Dates. This is a caramel bomb, okay? It's so thick and syrupy. After a couple of hours, it does kind of fade into a basic vanilla scent, but it's still really yummy, just not as intense. Take what I said about Latafa Eclair possibly being too sweet for you, this even more so, okay? It's insane. It can even be a little bit too much for me, so I definitely have to be in the right mood for it. Another all-time favorite that I'm sure you've heard so many people talking about, Fleur's Vanilla Skin. I finally got my hands on a bottle of this because every single time I would walk into Sephora, I had to spray myself with it. This is a deep, smoky, sweet vanilla scent, but it's not smoky in the way that Maison Margiela's by the fireplace is. I get a really strong meat smoking cabin smell from the dry down of by the fireplace that I just cannot get behind, even though it smells so delicious after a couple hours of wear. Here, the smokiness is smooth rather than sharp. It's not like this acridic smoke smell. It's just like a little bit woody and it has this really warm and cozy feel. It's so good. And considering this is a body mist, it lasts almost all day on me. I've purposely been avoiding using it because I don't want to run out because once I start using it, it's, it's, it's going to be gone. If I owned a full bottle of Angel Share, that would be up next, but I don't have that kind of money. So instead, I want to talk about Cocktail Intense by Fragrance World. This may or may not be my favorite Angel Share dupe, but you're going to have to wait and see for the final verdict when I finally make my Angel Share dupe deep dive. Oh, it's so good. Just such a yummy, spicy apple pie scent, and I cannot get enough of it. The last fragrance I'm going to talk about today is Okja's Street Art, which is a dupe of YSL Baby Cat. I haven't compared this directly to Baby Cat because I... Again, don't have the money for a bottle of that, but I think I kind of like this one more. Baby Cat is just a lot more intense and it, it like fills up a room when you wear it. This is a lot lighter and more personal, even though it is still quite strong. It's a deep peppery vanilla and I usually find pepper to be way too overpowering in fragrances, but it's done so well here. Super spicy and warm and sexy and it's just, so, so, so good. And it lasts all day. I only have two hair care products to mention. The first being the iconic Super Milk by Lush. I'm sure you've heard so many people recommending this for the last year, <laughs> but she really is that girl. As an actual hair conditioner, doesn't really do much for me, but it smells so good. <sighs> Cookies with the lightest hint of citrus. It almost has a little bit of spiciness as well. I just want to bathe in it. And the scent lasts all day and more. And then the other hair product that I want to mention is the Strengthen and Restore Leave-In Conditioner by Shea Moisture. I used to bleach my hair all the time and obviously it's very dry and damaged now. So this just helps me to smooth my hair, especially flyaways. Not completely, but it definitely has a noticeable difference on the frizziness of my hair. Okay, now we're getting to skin and body care because I've been trying so many new products that I absolutely love and I need to share with you. For context, I have really dry and 
semi-reactive skin. The first two products I don't actually have with me. I left them at a friend's house, but I will insert B-roll while I'm speaking. The first one is the Sika Daily Repairing Cream Concentrate by Uriage. This is a super rich face cream that's great for very dry skin. I recently tried a new sunscreen that I ended up being allergic to and it caused a lot of itchiness and peeling and this really brought my skin back to life in just a couple of days. If you don't like a really thick face cream, then this will not be for you. But for my dry skin girlies out there, I highly recommend picking this up to keep your skin hydrated in the colder months. Now, if we want to talk body lotion, we have La Roche-Posay's Lipicar Balm. I've actually been using the new light version recently, but I like it just as much as the regular one. Both are super hydrating and the light one smoothed out my cracked elbows in just one use. If you want a thicker body lotion, stick with the regular one. The lighter one is just a little bit easier to massage into the skin. I have been trying to find an eye cream that actually visibly reduces the lines under my eyes for years. I found some decent ones, but the collagen specialist eye care by Vichy, now, I don't have super intense creases under my eyes, especially now that I've been using this, but I saw a noticeable difference after just one time of using this. I don't know how I haven't heard more people raving about this. It's really, really good. It's nice and light, which is great because I don't like a thick eye cream that's super hard to blend in and you can use it all over the eyelid as well. Even though winter's coming, do not skip out on your sun protection. I've been using the Beauty of Josan Relief Sun for a while now and I don't think it's anything revolutionary, but it makes my skin very glowy and it doesn't cause my skin to get super irritated, which is honestly all I really need in a sunscreen. <laughs> now this is a chemical sunscreen, so if you're looking for something purely mineral, this is not gonna be for you. The last body care product I wanna talk about is the Vanilla Almond Body Scrub from Body Prescriptions. I don't know anything about this brand, I just needed a new body scrub and I found this at Winners or Marshalls and I, love it. Not only does it smell delicious, it's also a super nice exfoliant while still leaving my skin feeling really hydrated. I think I've seen other variations of this product at Winners and Marshalls, so hopefully they still have some when I run out of this. Finally, let's go over makeup. I love the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint, but only when I apply it as directed with my hands. Using a wet makeup sponge with this, which is how I normally apply my foundations, not for this. Mm -mm. It just makes it really patchy and incredibly sheer. And considering this is already a very light coverage foundation, I can't afford to lose any pigment. This has such a beautiful dewy finish and I just feel like it makes my skin look alive the way that normal foundations don't. I have the lightest shade ST 0.5 and when I first put it on, I thought it would be way too light, but it does oxidize a little bit and it is quite sheer. So you can't really tell that it's that light, but I do think if I were to repurchase it, I would get the ST one. I also know some people don't like the smell of this, which I never noticed it until somebody pointed it out to me, which is weird for me because I'm very sensitive to smell. And I totally understand why they think that. It almost reminds me of like weird Play-Doh, I don't know. It's never bothered me, but if you're worried about it, go check it out in store and see if you think it's gonna be a problem. If you have a lot of redness in your skin like I do and you've tried so many green color correctors and none of them seem to look right, try the e.l.f. Camo Color Corrector. It has a tiny bit of a yellow undertone as opposed to a lot of other green color correctors that are more blue. So it ends up blending into your skin a lot more naturally and it doesn't leave this awful green cast. It's really pigmented, but also light and creamy, which I found a lot of other color correctors are really thick and hard to blend blend in, so highly, highly recommend. Why am I holding it like this? Sorry. Next is a blush from Jane Iredale in the shade Awake. I've had this for years and it's just always my go-to. It's super easy to blend and it's this beautiful, cool toned pink that is really similar to my natural blush color. So I can never really go wrong with it, honestly. Now this isn't the actual packaging of the product. This is a tester that my friend gave me way back when she used to work with the company somehow in some capacity, but this is what it really looks like. I'm so sad that I'm nearly out of it because it's, oh, it's so good. I think this next product is my favorite makeup line from the last few months, and that is the Romand Hand All Fix Mascara in Long Ash. I've always liked brown mascaras, but I find a lot of them are just a little too warm toned for me, and my lashes and brows are more of like a grayish brown. So this really, really complements my natural undertones. Secondly, it's super, super lengthening, which is always what I go for with mascara. And though it's really lengthening, it feels quite natural, obviously because of the color, but also because it's not super clumpy. It does have fibers in the formula, which I I know some people don't love, but I haven't had any issues with it and I can wear it all day without any flaking. Next is another product that I've been absolutely obsessed with the past year and that is the Strawberry Rococo Lip Creams from Flower Nose. I have two shades, S06, which is like a mauve pink, 
and S08, which is a berry red. These are super creamy, buildable, and easy to blend, which is really important for me because the only lip look I do anymore is a smudged lip and lip creams are perfect for that. And finally, one last lip product, the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in the shade Cruella. This is another berry red that's just a hint darker than the Flower Nose one. So I like to layer them together to add a little bit more dimension to my lips. This is also a super creamy formula, but it is a little bit more long lasting, though I do have to reapply if I'm drinking and eating. So that's all I have for you today. I think the lighting has changed dramatically since I started filming, but let me know if you've tried any of the products I mentioned today or what your favorite products of the month are. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one, whenever that is.